In my last video, we discussed 1PW, the wrestling promotion that scammed all its fans, declared bankruptcy 100 times, and lied about a Shawn Michaels appearance. You'd think a wrestling promotion that runs this way would be dead by now, and in 2011, it did die, and for seemingly what was for good, but over a decade later, 1PW returned, and they fooled everyone all over again. Welcome to Top 10 Wrestling. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and let's discuss the return, problems, and future of 1PW. Where we last left off, 1PW dipped off the face of the planet, having pulled everyone's noses selling tickets to Shawn Michaels' appearances that were never taking place. At that time, the owner of 1PW was Danny Rod, and following the abandonment of 1PW, Danny Rod disappeared out of the public eye, and as the years went by, as days turned into months, turned into years, into a decade, it seemed as though 1PW had finally died its final death, and was in the rearview mirror of wrestling history. Well, that was all until... Remember when the dream became reality. monster was unleashed. When kings captured their crowns. PW announced a new twist of fate would be taking place October 1st, 2022 from the Doncaster Dome on Fight TV and on the poster featured big names like Mickey James, Ruby Soho and Rob Van Dam. In case you're wondering why it was called a new twist of fate, it's because the first ever 1PW show was called a cruel twist of fate, which I learned recently it was called that because Matt Hardy was meant to be on that show, but then he wasn't in the end and 1PW just kept the name because that's the most 1PW thing of all time. 1PW managing director Stephen Gauntley stated that this was the perfect time to bring 1PW back and that he's always had a passion for what 1PW was able to achieve many years ago. But pause. Managing director Stephen Gauntley. Stephen Gauntley, I recognize that name. In fact, Stephen Gauntley is a name I mentioned in my last video as he was the original founder and owner of 1PW. He owned 1PW from 2005 until 2008 and somehow he's bringing the company back 14 years later. But I can tell you that in 14 years, Gauntley hadn't gone anywhere. Post initial 1PW death, it's known that Stephen Gauntley got involved in the arcade business or the miniature arcade business, I don't really know what to call it. But searching for Stephen Gauntley Arcade on Google can find you this mention of Stephen Gauntley in 2011, three years after he left 1PW. It's an article on a site called RetroThing.com talking about a business called Retro Heart. And they're a business that seemingly make miniature arcade game cabinets. And as you can guess, this business is owned by Stephen Gauntley. And hey, scrolling at these pictures, hey, it all seems pretty cool, it seems all well and good, until you scroll down to the comments on this article. Hi, I'm posting here to tell everyone to avoid Retro Heart like the plague. This guy, Stephen G, ships poor quality, 
faulty and incomplete items, very different from the ones advertised in the images. He's also a natural born liar that will have excuses ready, will promise replacements and refunds, and will keep you waiting with lies for weeks before he actually stops replying to emails and disappears. Sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? He goes on to say that essentially he ordered an item from Retro Heart. It came through and it was poor quality, so he asked for a replacement before eventually asking for a refund when that couldn't be provided. And he was just straight up ghosted by Steven after false promises of a refund coming. Another comment right below it reads, Steven Gauntley, who allegedly produces these miniatures, accepted $300 of my money and never sent me anything. It's been two and a half months. He no longer replies to my emails. So it seemed as though Stephen Gormley had taken his scamming ways to the miniature arcade scene as well. But believe it or not, Stephen Gormley actually made a short-lived return to wrestling promotion even before the revived 1PW. As it was announced on February 5th, 2013, that Pro Wrestling Republic would be running a show at The Lead Mill in Sheffield. This was Pro Wrestling Republic's first ever show, and when it was revealed that the owner was Stephen Gormley, people had their hesitations. And well, some didn't. Some trusted this guy still for whatever reason, and they were excited for a show that was to feature the likes of Steve Carino, Chris Travis, Hijo Del Rey Mysterio, and many more. And if you haven't guessed already, this show, of course, never took place. The show was cancelled just weeks before, with talent not being paid, and fans not getting refunds once again. So yeah, with all that being said, this is the guy we are trusting to bring back 1PW. You. I wonder how this is gonna go. 1PW New Twist of Fate took place on the 1st of October 2022 in the Doncaster Dome to an attendance of 1,533 and it featured names such as Ace Austin, Alexander Hamilstone, Colt Cabana, Mickey James, Christopher Daniels, Rob Van Dam, and Jamie Hayter. It was a stacked card and seemingly things went pretty smooth. Fair enough. Their next show, No Turning Back, took place on the 18th of February. It featured names like The Rascals, Ruby Soho, Tyre Valkyrie, Rhino, John Morrison, and Will Ospreay. Then two months later, All or Nothing took place. This featured a tournament to crown a new 1PW World Heavyweight Champion, featuring people like Will Ospreay, Bobby Fish, Mark Haskins, Lance Archer, all in the tournament, with Will Ospreay being crowned the winner. We also saw Lizzie Evo win the 1PW Women's World title, Robbie X win the 1PW Openweight title, and Leon Slater and Man Like Doris win the 1PW Tag Team titles. All in all, it was actually looking pretty okay for 1PW. All things considered, all three shows had gone off without a hitch. There was no talks of anything going badly. That was until the build-up to their June 10th, 2023 show, Devil's Do, when Matt Cardona took to Twitter to complain that 1PW had not yet paid him for his upcoming appearance for them. In a now deleted tweet, Matt Cardona wrote, Unless I get my payment that I was promised before this match was advertised today, this match isn't happening. Sorry fans, in response to a 1PW post promoting his match at the show. However, Matt Cardona would actually follow up on this few hours later saying, Update, I got my money from 1Pro Wrestling. It's a shame I had to make a public tweet to get it, but it is what it is. I can't wait to make my return to the UK. I'm really looking forward to Cardona vs. Will Ospreay. It's going to be an instant classic, and Steph Delander will now be there too. So, water under the bridge it seemed. It was all good in the end. Devils Do took place as scheduled, Matt Cardona had his matches scheduled, and again, seemingly, the show went off without a hitch. That was until 1PW went silent following the show, and when 1PW goes silent like that, you know that something is going down within the company and it's not a good thing. And eventually news had hit that 1PW had gone bankrupt and were looking for investors. 1PW would finally respond to everything on their Facebook on the 8th of July, saying it has been a very challenging few weeks for the company. There have been changes of shareholders and changes of directorship and logistical challenges keeping it as vague as possible, really. Then a week later, a statement was posted saying that Stephen Gauntley was now 100% owner of 1PW, and that their October 28th show that was still up in the air, that fans didn't know whether it was still happening or not, is apparently still going ahead. I mean, in fact, as recently as four days ago, they have said that their October 28th event, Know Your Enemy, is still going ahead. So, time will tell if it truly does. 